always, by First Commonwealth Bank here on AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM. And, uh, boy, this this disclaimer is probably going to apply to this part here. Uh, as we get rolling with our interview with Marshall Criswell, it's a segment called Martial Law, and this program intended to be for informational purposes only. This does not constitute legal advice. The law constantly changes. The information may not be complete or correct depending on the date, your particular legal problem. Each legal problem depends on its individual facts, and different jurisdictions have different laws and regulations. Because of those differences, you should not act or rely on any information in this segment without seeking the advice of a competent attorney licensed to practice law in your jurisdiction for your particular problem. Let's say hello to Marshall Criswell. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you with us here this morning. Nice to be here. I told you, I warned you uh, that a listener asked me to ask you this question. They received in the mail from the U.S. Census Bureau a very official-looking document um, that's very thick, and it's called the American Community Survey, and on the envelope it says you are required by law to answer these questions and there is a substantial fine if it doesn't say this, but having looked further into it, there is a substantial fine of as high as, high as $5,000 if you don't answer the American Community Survey, which is supposedly sent to um, random households. This, In this particular case, they received it just a couple of years ago and had to go through this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And their main objection is it asks for very personal, very private information having to do with you, the people who live in your household, income, and, and some very personal questions. So their question was, ask Mr. Chriswell, do I have to answer this thing or not? Yeah, good question. I've seen those, um, and uh, and I know that that is, uh, you know, it, it uh, is a legitimate survey uh, put out by the Census Bureau. Um, and I'm sure if they uh, indicate that it's against the law not to not to answer it, that there is a, a federal statute or a federal regulation on point there. Now, are you going to be are you going to be prosecuted for uh, for not um, not responding? That's probably a, another question because, as we've discussed on this show before. Uh, when it comes to criminal statutes and criminal prosecutions, that's always at the discretion mm-hmm. of the uh, of the prosecuting agency. In this case, it would be a U.S. attorney's office, and they probably have bigger fish to fry than people that aren't answering surveys. But, but still, uh, yeah, I uh, they could uh, choose to make an example out of a they, few people, and they they certainly yeah. they certainly could, and mm-hmm. it would be an interesting uh, it would be an interesting case to to uh, to take up to a to a trial and possibly an appeal. Yeah, then yeah. It, it just it is an interesting thing because, you know, how accurately do you have to answer and and all of those things uh, how personal do you have to be? Can you simply write on on the on the response um I choose not to answer these questions because they are private and personal. Sure, sure. And you know, I mean, the government uh requests personal information from us all the time uh, when you uh, obtain a driver's license or file your tax returns or uh, all sorts of, uh, of, of examples there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. Huh. To which there is evidently no answer at the moment. <laughs> not, not at the moment. <laughs> Until someone chooses to prosecute and someone else chooses to defend, I guess. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, that was a question that a listener wanted me to ask you. So I, I have done well, that. Well, and I, I hope we gave some some semblance of an answer. <laughs> <laughs> we gave some semblance. We're not sure what what we resolved uh, by that. But uh, there you go. So that's, you know, one of those things that, and, you know, questions of legality, questions of what I'm required to do, we can broaden that whole thing. Um, when we are not sure of the source of a, um, of a requirement such as that in this case, or we're not sure what our legal rights are in terms of something that we're being required to do by our government or by some other agency. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when it really becomes um, uh, really important for you to have an attorney, doesn't it? Well, absolutely. Uh, listen, uh, the, obviously, uh, the law uh, is... Um, you know, it, it touches every aspect of our lives. Every everything that we do, from when we when I go and get in my car and pull out onto Philadelphia Street here, um, to uh, when I, I pay my pay my cable bill, to every 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 little thing that I do, um, the law touches that in some way. And you know, sometimes there are there are uh, big decisions that you have to make, um, and and the law 
touches those as well. And, and it's important that you obtain advice from a professional uh, so that you know what to do moving forward. Because as we've talked about, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble uh, by waiting too long to mm-hmm. assert a legal right, um, or you can um, sort of uh, take a little more punishment than you should by by not asserting your rights when you uh, you know when you when you have them. So uh, it's it's just important to know um, your your rights and, and it, you know and your responsibilities. And so to you know, a lot of people go online and they say, well, you know, if I, I, I need to, I, I need to, um, you know, my neighbor's trespassing in my, in my yard. What do I do? Uh, they, they go online and, and Google it and say, well, you know, this is what I do. And, you know, you can get, you can get into so much trouble, um, by not consulting with a professional, because if you, if you try to do this self-help and in all areas, you know, society's changing in this respect. Uh, I think, 10, 20 years ago or more, there was a lot of deference to professionals and professional opinions. Mm -hmm. And now when, um, uh, you know, now there's so much information available and often conflicting information that is really difficult to sift through. I think the medical profession has dealt with this as well with WebMD and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's important and I think it's great to have the knowledge out there and for patients or clients to be able to have informed conversations uh, and a little back and forth with their with their lawyer or with their doctor or whoever it may be. But uh, it's led to this DIY, do-it-yourself mentality mm-hmm. uh, that, you know, if I can save a hundred bucks by writing my will on my own, um, and uh, then I, I should do that rather than paying an attorney whatever he, whatever he quotes me to do that work. Uh, yeah, that that's great. But what happens when you die and and uh, the, this will is not valid? Yeah. Uh, the the uh, the plan that you've put in place falls apart, doesn't work uh, because it was a form that you printed out. One online. of the things that we say in our disclaimer at the beginning of this segment each time is the laws in your particular area must be paid special attention to the jurisdictions. Um, and and one of the aspects of that and. I guess this is a warning against trying to do it yourself over the Internet, is you have, A, no idea who actually is supplying that information, B, how dated that information is, and I would assume that that's a big one. Absolutely. Um, Laws, as we say in the disclaimer, laws change all the time Mm -hmm. and can change substantially from when something was posted on the Internet and today's day and age. Yeah, I've dealt with a situation uh, like that very recently where, uh, a, a potential client came in to meet with me and said, "You know, I have uh, my my um, mother has uh, she she's older. She's got Alzheimer's. She's not able to make decisions for herself. I I have a power of attorney here, and I and I gave it to the bank, uh, but they won't let me use it. They said it's not it's not the correct form. And I looked at it, and it was obviously something that was printed out from the internet, mm-hmm. um, and it didn't comply." With you know, it was signed uh, in the past year or so, but it didn't comply with the power of attorney law revisions that were put in place by the Pennsylvania legislature in 2015. Mm-hmm. Uh, banks just not going to accept it. They're not going to take a risk uh, that uh, they're allowing someone to handle mom's bank accounts, write checks, things like that, uh, it, it, with a document that is not legally valid. Uh, they're just not going to do it. And you see this in all types of situations. Um, and uh, it's really, you know, and, and it's hard because you, you have to explain, well, you know, there, this, this was something that could have been prepared by an attorney and would have been done correctly, but this, this just isn't going to work. And now, Unfortunately, we're down the road, and mom's not able to sign a new one. Yeah, uh, Internet predators can take advantage of that in a big way as well. There's the story today from the Pennsylvania Treasury Department about uh, collecting um, with phone calls uh, and how they don't do that, but there's a scam going on right now. Um, you can be convinced by some, well, very convincing people on the Internet uh, and through the telephone uh, that you are required to do something by a new law that took effect on this particular date, and boom, you better send us money now, and mm. people fall for it. All the time, all the time, um, and that's that's another, you know, or the, um, or, or uh, you know, you, you've won money, and you've got to send us money to claim your prize, or mm-hmm. all, the, all those kinds of things, and, you know, there's, there's always time, okay, uh, there, there's, there's always time to 
um, you know, uh, think about what you're doing uh, and if it's an appropriate uh, if it's an appropriate uh, action to consult with an attorney or in that case call law enforcement. Yeah, yeah. People can get tangled up uh, in uh, all kinds of snares uh, in that way and in many other ways by not knowing what the laws are. So when they get a notice, maybe not the American Community Survey, whatever that was, mm-hmm. but when they get a notice. <laughs> Uh, in the mail from some agency that seems to be legitimate. Um, There are options and probably going to an attorney and uh, finding out the legitimacy of of any correspondence is probably a good idea. Yeah, I mean, that's one good thing about about attorneys. I mean, we've, uh, you know, we've had uh, a a lot of education, a lot of years of um, studying, in in most cases, you know, studying government. I I was a political science major before I went to law school and then uh, in law school and and experience afterwards. So, you know, I'm pretty much familiar with every uh, every agency, most of the nooks and crannies of the state and federal bureaucracy would at least ring a bell for me. If you bring me a a letter, uh, you know, from someone purporting to be a government agent, I can probably tell you whether it's legitimate or not, or I can tell you how to find out. Yeah, you have a footprint in there, and then you can just uh, take the next step, whereas someone might not know where to where to uh, pursue whatever legal position they, they, are, they find themselves in. Mm-hmm. Well, those are all good things for folks to do. Um, uh, contacting an attorney is never a bad idea. So how do people contact you should they find themselves in, in that position? Uh, my website is www.westernpalawyer.com, and uh, phone number is 465-5826, and we are located in the Atrium Building here in downtown Indiana. So circular file, not the exact right <laughs> response to the, to the uh, American, American Community, Community Survey. Survey. You didn't hear that from me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just did. It is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank and its AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM.